Ink Ribbon. This video is sponsored by 2Retro.com. Sure, we've got tons of our favorite retro games making a comeback. Some of them have been remade, some of them have been remastered, and some have simply been re-released in their original glory to modern platforms. But as we find ourselves in this hellscape of terrible and greed-driven AAA games, a lot of gamers are deciding to go back in time and try out some older games, only to find that some games aren't as easy or affordable to play as you'd think. As someone who cares deeply about game preservation, I thought we'd look at a few games that for one reason or another haven't been re-released in any way, shape, or form and are in danger of being lost forever. In no particular order, here's my list of 10 games that need and deserve a re-release. Number 10. Vagrant Story. As someone who is both a fan of PS1 games and someone who is currently making a PS1 style game, I've studied a lot about the graphics of the iconic console. But I'll tell you, there is no other game regarded for having the best presentation of PS1 graphics than Vagrant Story. While it lacks voice acting and has a battle system that, let's be honest, isn't really that great, the story, the characters, and the absolutely beautiful graphics make this game a standout as a historical gem that shouldn't be forgotten. Unfortunately, it's still stuck on the PS1, but thankfully it's widely available for emulation and it plays great, so at least we can keep it preserved. Resident Evil Outbreak If you're a Resident Evil fan and you've never played this game, you are really missing out because it's the most definitive Raccoon City experience you can ever have. You also do things that for some reason were never introduced in other games. Things like breaking down doors, locking onto enemies while aiming, dodge mechanics, and more. Along with the additional lore, characters, and unique gameplay, you have the addition of online play, which died long ago, but like a zombie, was revived by the passionate community behind it. Sadly, this game was simply too ahead of its time and seemingly stuck forever on the PS2. Number 8 Shattered Memories The Wii was a very unique console and unfortunately led to a lot of games being made exclusively for it. Among these is one of the most atmospheric and interactive horror games ever made. Using the motion controls you're able to do various things like opening cabinets, looking through drawers, and interacting with puzzles and activities. It may not sound that interesting, but if you've tried it, you know. While there are emulation options, you'd still need a Wiimote. Otherwise, there's the PS2 and PSP versions, which aren't as polished. I think the same way that Resident Evil 4 VR gave us a whole new experience, Shattered Memories could be an amazing game if it was revived and re-released as a VR game. Can you get me some pills? There's a bunch in the cabinet in the bathroom. Get me some green ones. Okay. Look in the cabinet. Bottom shelf. Oh, my head. Number seven. Snatcher. For all Kojima and Metal Gear Solid fans, I'd say this is a definite must-play. It's unbelievably light. <laughs> you bet it is. From the pixel art that I've seen and knowing what I know about Kojima's delivery of experiences, Snatcher is one of those games I can't believe has never had a re-release of any kind. Now, if you speak Japanese, then you've got options, because the game is available on several systems, including the PS1. But if you want it uncensored, in English, and with full voice acting, then the only version is the Sega CD version. 
As I'm sure you can guess, it's not the most popular console, so emulation support isn't as widely available. This is actually the game that made me create this video because I am currently trying to get it working via emulation, which I did, but for some reason the game won't save, so I have to start from the beginning each time. This is the kind of stuff that highlights why game preservation is important. Here comes Katrina. I can't believe you did that, Gillian! Uh, well, uh, you see, I was just... Face up to it like a man. You shut up. Number 6. Panzer Dragoon Saga. When I was researching games for this list, Panzer Dragoon Saga popped up all over the place with some very strong words from fans of not only this game, but also its home console, the Sega Saturn. The game reviewed extremely well with a ton of 9 out of 10s, it won several big awards, and it pushed the Saturn to its limit. But sadly, mostly due to limited marketing, it didn't perform very well. And the worst part about this is the main reason the game will never see a return is because the developers lost the source code. Allegedly. Which means that it's simply not possible to re-release it. So fans will have to keep this one alive as long as they can, especially with Saturn emulation not being as widely popular. Number 5 Silent Hill 1 While I'm happy to see Konami reviving the series with Silent Hill 2 Remake, I still think that the first game deserved and needed a remake way more. But with that aside, Silent Hill 2, 3, and 4 are all playable on several platforms including PC, but for some reason the original Silent Hill seems to be in PS1 purgatory never having left the 90s, and we have yet to see it again. And it's such a shame because this is where it all began, and while the graphics of this game have served as a blueprint for how to make PS1 graphics in indie games, it could still really benefit from a facelift. If you want to play the games I'm mentioning here, or just want to play your favorite retro games on the go, then check out the RG35XX SP Flip, which I'm currently playing on. This retro handheld emulator lets you play your favorite classic games on the go. This sleek flip design handheld may look like a Game Boy Advance SP, but it actually supports most major gaming platforms from the 90s and the 2000s, and goes all the way up to PS1 and even Dreamcast games. So now you can play your favorite classic games anywhere. I'm even able to play the Dreamcast version of Code Veronica. Oh, and remember when I said I had issues getting Snatcher to work? Well, this actually came with Snatcher already installed, which made me a very happy gamer. With the holidays coming up, it also makes a fantastic gift for any gamer in your life. Right now, you can get 10% off your order with code INCREMENT when you order from 2retro.com, and this discount code applies to anything you buy on their site, so if there's a different device that catches your eye, you can still get that 10% off. Link is in the description. I'll be doing a full review on this and one other handheld emulator soon, so stay tuned for that. But uh, for now, back to the video. Number 4 The Third Birthday this entry kind of applies to all three of the Parasite Eve games since the first two are also stuck in PS1 Purgatory, but I wanted to put the third birthday on here because I think even though it isn't the best game in the franchise, it was one that not a lot of players got to experience, mainly due to the fact that it was exclusive to the PSP. When it comes to the presentation, there's a lot that's worth showcasing, including some really beautiful cutscenes and the fact that we can hear Aya's voice for the first time. Eternal Darkness. Constantly appearing in top 10 lists for horror games, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem is regarded as one of the most iconic horror games ever made. 
Unfortunately, it was made by Silicon Knights, which if you know your game development history, you know that to say it went out of business would be an understatement. And if you wonder why there's never been a remake, sequel, or remaster of this game, well, you can thank Nintendo. Not only do they own the rights to the game, but they also own the patent for the sanity meter. On top of that, there have been a few companies that attempted to sway Nintendo, getting as far as meetings, but in typical Nintendo fashion, they refused to work with third-party developers on an IP they own, so they didn't allow it. Thanks, Nintendo. I'm afraid there's not much to see. Number two. Deep Fear. A second Sega Saturn game on this list for you, Deep Fear was one of the best Resident Evil clones ever made. Taking place on an underwater research facility and implementing a lot of interesting horror mechanics, including a limited air supply, it's a really great game that's worth a play if you're a fan of survival horror. Even the voice acting puts Resident Evil 1 to shame. Crash? What happened? We don't know yet. I asked Dubois, the designer, to come too. Oh! There's no problem with my CFOX system! No accident should have occurred! Oh! While it's trickier than most emulators, it's still possible to get it up and running, but it's just a shame that it was never ported or revived in any way because it's actually a really great hidden gem. Everyone on base, until instructions are given, do not make a sound. Stop all construction work. I repeat, do not make a sound. This is not a drill. Number one. The Sims 1. Anyone who has played The Sims in the past 10 years can tell you how the franchise has fallen from grace. Once being the best selling PC game of all time, the series hit a high note and then just continued downward in quality. There was actually an official re release of The Sims 2, and The Sims 3 is available even on Steam. But to this day, there's never been any port or re-release of the original Sims game. Also, trying to get this to work on modern PCs is an absolute nightmare. Something I can tell you from experience. And with every new version of Windows, it just gets more and more difficult to keep stable. There are console versions of the first game, but they are completely different and almost feel like spin-offs. If EA loves money so much, I'm sure a re-release of this iconic game would please gamers and shareholders alike. <laughs> but what do we know, right? We're just the gamers who actually play these games. Ah, now that was just a sliver of the vast amount of amazing games from years past that are slipping away, but what are some other games that you personally would like to see make a return, even if it's just to be playable on modern hardware? Let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll make a second video like this. Um, I also invite you to check out my channel for more videos just like this one. Until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon.